Hey guys, it's JBlade2000, finally back from the dead. I am very sorry about my hiatus. It's just that I am a college student now. And um, college and both just working at Walmart just to get money for gas, food, that kind of stuff, honestly has been eating me alive. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, after I have, you know, Christmas break, uh, some, some very, um, personal stuff happened to me. So, that's why I, I haven't really been making many videos. Um, I, I am sorry I entirely missed, like, the Ruby Volume 4 hype train with theories and things. Um, but, mm, uh, but I am still at, you know... Ruby Volume 4 Episode 6 out on YouTube. Uh, still hyped for Volume 4. It's shaping up to be a really good volume. So, I just want to start with a kind of a fun video uh, for for getting back uh, filming and getting on YouTube. Because the next few videos I want to talk about are kind of um, heavy and, and, and kind of make you think I, I'm... I'm going to try and do some videos explaining uh, some of the details, some of the beliefs in Christianity. Of course, I'm going to do my uh, Sword Art Online Part 2 video very soon. I'm actually watching through Dinosaur King again to actually redo my review of Dinosaur King. Because, let's face it, my first review of that was absolutely abysmal. But, we're here for a Ruby Theory. And these are two short mini-theories, uh, basically. So, this first one is going to be about the Faunus race, and the, the next one is going to be about Salem, the main antagonist of Ruby. Now, um, Faunus are basically half-animal, half-human uh, creatures on Remnant that have been discriminated against for as long as anyone can remember. I'm not sure why my screen got all bright of a sudden. There we go. Um, I have no clue why that happened. But anyway, and so Jake the One Man Band made a video on the World of Remnant Faunus video. And someone by the name of... I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Danny Shikzen. I think. Um, commented about... Mendel's Laws of Inheritance, which doesn't really go into detail or anything, but um, means there's a 70% chance that a human and a faunus will get together and have a human child. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, that will have a faunus child. I don't know why I said human. But anyway, so there's a 70% chance that a faunus and human get together and have a faunus child. And he says that that means that the faunus gene would be dominant instead of recessive. And I find that really interesting, that if humans came first and the faunus are offshoots of humans, wouldn't that mean the human gene would be uh, um, very dominant? Then again, I mean, I, I and my sister have red hair, while my mom has curly black hair, and my dad has um, just brown hair with a little bit of red in it. So, um, so red hair and, and me and my sister are recessive genes that have, have both come out in, in both my mom and dad's children. So, I don't know. I was never that good in science of... Um, genes and things. But, could the reason that the faunus gene is so prevalent is the um, non-recessive gene be the fact that the faunus came before the humans? Maybe humans are an offshoot of the faunus. Now, again, we have no clue what uh, Ruby's what the Ruby world's origins are, and actually I'm going to get into that in my other mini-theory. But we don't know if 
a God created it, if a pantheon of gods created the world, or if it's just made by evolution. Um, however, there is, you know, natural selection that actually, you know, does happen and is a real part of, of real uh, ecosystems and things. Passing on genes, uh, strongest survive, yada, yada, yada. But it, it, it just makes me think that perhaps faunas aren't as, I'm going to say strange as you might think. We've seen horses and, and dogs and things in the Ruby universe, so we know there are actual animals there. And the Grimm, excluding the Geist uh, from the recent volume, most of the Grimm are very animals. You got the King Taijitu, which is a snake. You got the... Um, Boba Tusk, Boba Tusk, I forget that thing's name, the, the boar thing, you have the Nevermore, all these animal grim, and animals on the remnant, and then the faunus are half animal. If you take an ears of tail away from a faunus, uh, they're basically a human. So then, since there are tons of animals on remnant, and since the faunus gene is dominant. Could that mean that the faunus came first? I don't know. And uh, remember, the the first episode didn't talk about faunus, except actually in in this scene right here that I'm taking the the, the picture from at at the faunus rev rally when Lisa Lavender just kind of quickly mentions it. But. Um, it just says humans were made from from dust or whatever, and and found um, and and found this new element appropriately named dust. And so it doesn't go into the uh, you know details of history. It's the first episode. It's supposed to introduce you to this world. And again, it's Salem ta talking, speaking to Ozpin. So she's not going to go over an entire like history of the world with him. She. I mean, you're just not going to do that. So, there is a lot of unknowns with the faunus. And there is a lot of no unknowns with the creation of the ruby verse. But I think that perhaps there is a very good chance that even though the faunus are discriminated against, even though, and it's blurry, I, I need to just get a, a new camera or something. This is driving me nuts. But, um... There we go. Sorry. But I just would find it interesting that these people that are discriminated against, that these people who don't really have a place to call home except Australia, basically, um, could actually be the species that humans are descended from. And because the humans want to keep that a secret, because maybe the, the, the faunus being the original race and the humans coming from them could tie into, you know, the relic, whatever, whatever um, Cinder and the rest of Salem's gang are trying to do. Or it just could be something that's hidden in the annals of history because, you know, someone decided, no, don't tell anyone. We don't know at this point, but a lot of things are unknown about Ruby, even in Volume 4, and that's part of why we have so many theorists going about. Alright, now, let's move on to Salem, because actually this new episode, uh, Volume 4, Episode 6, where uh, Tyrion comes in and, and tries to kidnap Ruby, actually gave me another piece of evidence for this. And my theory is that Salem is actually a god, or, or goddess, of the ruby world, of a pantheon. Again, like I said, um, we don't really know how the ruby universe was created by god, by evolution, whatever. And so there's a good chance that a pantheon of gods could exist. And, like um, the, the captain... In Volume 4, when the giant dragon thing, I'm actually not sure if that thing has a official name. I'm just going to call it the Lowland Giardos. Um, 
rises up out of the sea and and he says he says something like by the gods and so we know by that statement that there are people that believe in a pantheon on on ruby or if there are old legends about it kind of like the greek legends you know we we don't really know they're not real <clears throat> camp half blood um but we we still know these legends very well because they're such great legends and so that may be the case but salem doesn't look like any other character we've seen. Even even Cinder looks mostly human. While while Salem looks like kind of a human grim hybrid or or some other being, and that very well be the case. Salem may just be the embodiment of death and destruction. Uh, the the goddess, uh, maybe a trickster like Loki, or. Um, just a catalyst of um, a death and rebirth. There might be a rebirth cycle in Ruby that is going to destroy the world, kind of like uh, Dragon Drive's climax. Um, sorry, Dragon Drive's and sheer manga that I really like. Um, but anyway, there are actually uh, kind of four pieces of evidence for this. One is the captain, one is Tyrion, which I'll get into a moment. One is the magic of the the um, wizard in the Four Maidens trilogy. Trilogy. Why did I say trilogy? I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm screwing up words today. Uh, in, in the Fall Ma uh, in the Four Maidens legend. Golly. I don't know why you guys watch me. Um, and Uh, there was a piece of evidence. I'm I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, anyway. So, in the newest episode, Tyrion says they are they are following their goddess, and he kind of does this weird wing pose. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be like a, a, a wing pose, like a statue, if it was supposed to be some kind of crucifix. I honestly have no idea, because Tyrion's just kind of crazy. But, and then, Ruby whispers, you know, Cinder, because that's all they know. And he says, uh, not in her wildest dreams. And so he's not talking about Cinder. They made that very clear. He's talking about Salem. And the old man just kind of has magic. They don't explain where this magic came from in the Four Maidens uh, story. He just kind of has magic. He's just this old hermit wizard. What if these gods of Remnant gave him this magic? What if, what if Salem actually gave him this magic? And as we know, uh, the magician gave the four maidens his power, his magic, to go out and help people and, and protect Remnant and, and just do good. So if the magician got his powers directly from Salem, and he gave then gave those powers to the four maidens, and Salem hasn't liked that, then maybe she come down to Earth and try to get that power back. Or uh, aspire to have four maidens like Cinder as one of the maidens trying to get uh, Amber's power of her own to cause destruction and dismay. And if you think about it, Salem is very powerful. We don't know if she's controlling the Grimm or their births but, um, from those pools, but it is perhaps heavily implied. Um, there's this whole dragon continent that they haven't talked about that, you know, of, of course, you know, Salem and, and Cinder and Ospin aren't, you know, just all there on that island. No way. I mean, they, 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 must, they must have not mentioned that for some of the reasons. Of course she's there. 
anyway, um, and, and when Salem comes in the very first time in, in Volume 4, Episode 1, you actually see her kind of float, and she has this menacing presence. And we haven't really seen any supernatural powers of, of um, Salem. And I don't think the grim squid thing would count. But we haven't really seen any supernatural powers of Salem, so we can't really confirm it. But I would bet that Salem is actually an ancient goddess of Remnant that wants to destroy the world because that's her function. She is the goddess of death and destruction. So those are kind of two mini-theories. I'm sorry if I'm scatterbrained through this whole thing. I'm just trying to get in, in the groove of things. Um, next time, I'm going to do my Sword Art Online Volume 2, and it's going to be the stuff that I don't actually like about Sword Art Online, the stuff that people have argued uh, and that I agree with of Sword Art Online. Uh, and then I'm actually going to um, do a bit of um, Christian videos. Not really. I'm going to explain it after I do my Sword Art Online video. So, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Blade 2000